all right so this stream or video is going to be about in betweening uh, complex uh, Disney style characters you can see I've got this animation here that I'm working on um, featuring um, Rebecca from Disney's Tailspin you can see there's a frame missing here because I'm gonna do an in-between for you but um, you can see that it's looking quite solid and we have actually started in betweening it all but before that um, I had the drawings certain poses key poses breakdown poses were done um, in what we call tie down stage so in betweening is simply a simple process of drawing in between frames between other frames that's where we use our light box uh, we still have to focus on the law of arcing which is an animation law of arcing so you can see I got 20 drawings here and here there's a considerably more amount so I cleaned those drawings up and then I made my breakdown drawings um, on uh, between them which is you know a little mixture of light box but m predominantly not the light box to get the arcing and the solidity right a lot of people in search of solidity lose solidity because they have the light box on and they're not looking at the shape changing and looking at how the mass of the shape shape will change to create the illusion of dimension and they're just simply trying to maintain the shape by looking at the previous shape taking the eye off the ball so to speak okay anyway let's jump straight into this but before we do i'd like to remind you that if you'd like to learn uh how to do this kind of stuff then consider joining the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation which is the real animator training library go to ambianimation.com uh, and click on real animator training i'll tell you more about that at the end let's just jump in to continue with uh, our stream and what we're doing right so I'm gonna go from here you see I got my timing chart worked out here and it is drawn in accordance to where I'm gonna put the frame so you can see here this is 65 67 69 71 so we've got 65 67 no 69 but 71 so 67 this frame here is halfway between here and here right it's a what we call a half but then if i go if we look at this here so this is halfway between 65 and 71 if we look at 69 that's going to be halfway so it's quite simple really so when we go here between 67 we put on our light box we're going to basically draw a frame halfway between here and here that's what the light box is going to be on for to help us um, decipher that and understand that all right so um, it's a trickier frame which is why I picked it it's you know we're gonna have to turn the light box off as well so the first thing I'm gonna see is the eye lines the eye lines are like this so I'm gonna put my eye line half the way in the middle there I'm, I wouldn't normally draw I would like just eyeball it because I'm used to seeing things this way but I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you all how this works so here you got to be careful right so this is going to be coming up here and of course i'm not going to stick with these things because i they might not be really following the right arc but these are just kind of placeholders that the light box is helping me understand so again i've got the shape of the nose here the shape of the nose here and i don't want to you know it's it's quite a straightforward in between it's not a breakdown so literally i am kind of just put plonking everything half the way in the middle but i will check afterwards you got to keep an eye on the changing snout shape as we go from this shape into this shape to create the illusion and all of that hard work has been done um, without the light box when we were doing the breakdown stage now i need to look at the smile line and the smile line between these these two here so i can see the smile line uh, the cheek is coming up there like that and we're gonna have to disappear that then we've got the bottom of the chin hair the bottom of the chin hair halfway so we're going to then we're gonna put that halfway and we're going to look 
that's just going to disappear away in there. So you see all these basic shapes, the mouth, the mouth, the line, just finding that halfway point in between them, right? Then I'll have to turn off my light box and make a judgment afterwards. I'm not going to draw the complete clean line drawing because um, that will just take too long, but I will get this to a tie down stage where I can simply trace a nice clean line on top of it because at the moment it is a little bit rough. So again here I'm just dealing with basic shapes. I'm not trying to get the the, the so much the accuracy of the the line or the fur uh, thing. I'll do that afterwards. These are so simple that I can not worry about them. They're just like putting halfway lines so I can zoom in with the magnifying glass and attend to those later so here I can just very easily kind of suggest the halfway points here like this the ear this ear going behind her head here I may need to think a little bit about it but not too much because all of the hard work has been done so here we can see how that's starting to come together the trickiest thing is going to be the eyes because we need to think about the space between the eyes and maintaining that especially as she's got you know eyes within these kind of circles uh, patches these eye patches that she has and we have to think of the space of the circle around the eye patch so you see here rather than using i am using the light box but you can see i'm flipping forwards and backwards a lot more with these because because they are something that i'm really concerned about the volume I'm concerned about volume and mass throughout as i'm doing this but um the eyes are stuff that you're really going to have to be careful of because a lot of uh this kind of animation is very expressive and if the eyes are constantly not set in the skull of the head and they're kind of wandering around the face it just kills anything any kind of sincere emotion that you're trying to put into action here here i'm gonna have to look a bit so i've got to think about this shape here right and this shape here so if I see that, I can see that it's probably something like that. That's how that works. So we're going to do something like that. So that's quite straightforward. Um, now, uh, everything else is really simple. Really simple. Just simple light box tracing. Maybe the hand might, might I might, you know, some experienced cleanup artists would just straight up uh, go with a clean line on a, on a hand at a distance like this but if you're really concerned about getting it solid this isn't even on the in the screen but for some reason I'm doing it because there's another character where the hand relates to that character and I'm doing it for myself so I can keep uh, keep intact the position of the other character whose hand uh, she's holding resting on his arm um, the necklace again is necklace is actually really easy it's constructed like there's three hair there's three hair and there's three hair so it seems really really tricky to to animate it but it's actually not and you know it's uh if it's approached in a very str uh um logical manner it becomes quite simple but hair in betweening we're seeing that this is all rising up so i've got to start from there and then look and see that okay well this one is then going to be this one this one is then going to come up to this this is then coming up to this and it's they're all kind of halfway in the middle but it just gives me that um assurance that as i start tidying this up with a tidy line everything is in the right place and it's all working right so there we can see the necklace is moving and i'll just scrub that necklace for you so you can see let's just keep the necklace zoomed in on this necklace so you can watch it throughout the 
the animation so you can see how solid it is a little bit of changing and turning actually helps because it's intentional here you can see the beads are being affected and they're changing shape like that we don't want it to just be a complete solid round but the amount of keeping the consistency of those beads and the number of those beads they're growing and shrinking slightly that's what happens give or take but you don't really notice it especially when we look at it as a whole throughout the thing so it's about it's about getting it getting the illusion working and not stressing too much about the perfection of it because sometimes when you stress about the perfection you'll get a very mathematical look which is what digital puppetry is today and it's why it doesn't really have that nice uh, dimensional appeal of uh, hand-drawn animation which goes beyond the third dimension into our own uh, great illusion okay so let me tidy this up now i've taken it far enough and i'm quite happy with it um so now i'm going to switch from light box mode into uh flipping mode so i'm gonna really have to the thing to really focus on on here is the nose getting that nose and snout working between these two right to get the transition because i want to slow it into slightly this frame here so we don't want it to look like it's it's growing and morphing now the thing is is it is changing shape so again you need to understand that so it's not you whatever i do it will look like well there's a change in shape if i just isolate these three frames but then we have to understand how to cheat the illusion to change the shape how many you know we're only seeing these drawings for one uh 24th or two uh you know uh two twenty fourths or basically 12 if you want to say 12 frames a second but don't ever work at 12 fps you know we want the flexibility to maneuver between the two um so the whole thing is creating that illusion and selling that illusion um so not just to just isolate those those three frames and say well that that, that shape is not quite it doesn't look like the same shape it isn't the same shape we're cheating it we're transitioning from one shape to another so we're distributing mass we're moving everything up right when it's more district when it's kind of lower here like this right and that's intentional right this is again a lot of confusion occurs in this search for solidity when people are trying to do this kind of animation that they become afraid of the very thing that they need to do to create that quality effect that they're that they're looking for they get become afraid of changing shape you don't ever want to be afraid of changing shape you need to embrace the shape change confidently in order to get the result that you seek that's exactly what i'm doing here now i'm going to look at that snout i'm going to step away from it and i'm going to watch it right i can see that this if i just look at these three frames here i can see that there's a little bit of a bulge happening down here that i may not want so i'm going to take that away and think about introducing some of the bottom lip from this see i'm not you the light box is on but i'm not really paying attention to it i'm thinking about how to get in and out of shape here right that's what it's all about so now that's a little bit better in fact i'm gonna change the angle of this just a little bit more to the side like that perfect perfect now I'll, now you gotta get back and look at the bigger picture so i'm gonna scrub the lot right and that's working right once i tidy that up and we don't have this big messy line here which is jumping out at us that's another thing maybe depending on your experience you'll know what i'm talking about you'll see that's working or you'll see this 
kind of harsh red line jumping out and going, I can see it, I can see the shape change. No, once it's tidied up. Let me give you another example. For example, look at all this big mouth hair, right? Hair, hair, and then we're going to go this. It's completely gone as we've changed the angle. Just watch it, right? You don't really see, you don't really, if I slow it down, but we won't look at that speed. You notice it there, but if we just watch it like that, it's nice and like fast movement going from that expression to the other and then slowing heavily into this. This is what we're seeing, right? So it's all throughout this whole piece of animation. We can see that happening just like that, right? And that's going to look really nice. It's gonna, we're going to really feel that head tilt when we tidy that drawing up with a fine black line. So let's continue now. Um, that was the possibly the most uh, challenging aspect. The other elements are all um, quite straightforward, except for perhaps the eyes. So let's go in and do the eyes. So we let me just put on the light box just so I can see the eyelash path. But again, I don't really want to, I'm now not really focusing on the light box I did when I did my initial rough to get them into place. But now I'm more focusing on flipping my uh, drawings and watching the shape change. Now this eyelid gets obscured behind the other eye, so I'm going to use that particular frame to help me with this here I will focus on this eye now this is the other thing we need to think about she has got these dark heavy heavier they're not that heavy they're not 80s nice 80s Jennifer Connolly heavy but they're heavy enough she's got a thicker line on her eyebrows right and we need to think about line width when we're doing that, right? So that kind of works, but now I need to think about the line width. So I'm kind of going to focus more on the, the frame that I'm going into rather than coming out of. Because that's the frame that we want to kind of hit. So I'm doing my line width like that, right? So that when I trace it with a nicer line it's all been worked out right so that that all works everything else is super easy now I'm just gonna come in here and make a halfway line in between here this is all super easy also the way that how I use line changes right there are many different ways of drawing and unfortunately the the i would call i for illustrator i for ignorant right they don't they, they moan about this thing they call it chicken scratching but listen those guys bless them you know they hurt themselves after doing just one drawing right Imagine I've got to juggle the line width and the volume of all of these lines and make sure that the line has consistency and the lines are in the right place. Okay, so I've got to make, I've got to tread cautiously, right, when I'm doing this. I'm not drawing and selecting my line like some, some uh, guy thinking he's, uh, you know, he's so good because he can really definitely look. That's easy shit, right? When you want to get to the, when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's a whole new ball game. We're talking about super clean, consistent line over a series of drawings, right? I mean, how hard is it really? You see, I can do that with these lines. Now I know where I'm putting them, right? Because I've made that rough, cautious line underneath like that, right? So, but then you're going to go around the eyes and the nose. Well, even when I'm working in this line, I will do it the same way because the eyes and the nose and all those things, there is no room for error when you're at this level, right? 
none of this you know people aren't gonna look did he make the line like that did he make the line like that they're just gonna see a line in the wrong place and they're gonna call it and it's gonna look shit right so any one of you that's trying to learn off the internet you're getting your information from a lot of different people right so i want you to ask yourself who is giving you the information look at their work what have they done what have they done what have they achieved where have they worked do they live up to what you know what they're saying right and the fact of the matter is is very few people are on you know out there teaching this kind of elite quality hand-drawn animation what i'm doing not only teaching you the rough aspects of it um but i'm showing you here a little bit about what happens before i go cleaning a drawing up so i'm categorically telling you about line and see here i'm gonna make this line i'm categorically telling you that that is the most efficient and most effective way of getting your lines consistent right so whatever you might have read and whoever you might have heard it from about this is chicken scratch this is insecurity this is whatever ask yourself what are they doing are they doing high-end top quality hollywood quality multi-million dollar feature quality hand-drawn animation no well then their opinion is worth nothing right because it doesn't relate if they're talking about illustration if they're talking about hand-eye coordination improving your your draftsmanship skills and being more confident with your line sure that relates right but there's a different tool for for every job you know try to cut down a tree with a kitchen knife it's a sharp blade right so is an axe a sharp blade but you're not going to cut down a tree with a kitchen knife right it's not going to happen you need an axe to do that so it's this, it's the right approach at the right time for the right things so unfortunately it's a great resource we live in a great times where there's people out there with good intentions wanting to help you uh wanting to share what they know what's what's brought them to that level uh now as i said right tool right time for the right job but then some of these people they oh, they don't know professional practice right now why does professional practice why is professional practice so important if it looks good it looks good right absolutely right absolutely but the thing is is when you're doing stuff like this you need to be efficient you need to be efficient people say to me how can you work so fast i've practically knocked out this animation and cleaned it up in a couple of days basically literally it's taken me a couple of days to do almost five seconds of super controlled full-blown you know we're not talking limited you know this stuff moves like a a multi-million dollar disney movie right and it's just taken me a couple of days on my own to do that well that's efficiency that's professional practice and what you need to understand is you're not going to want to waste time using the wrong tool remember the, the the kitchen knife uh scenario right you're not going to cut down a tree with a with a kitchen knife how 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 much longer is that going to take than than actually using getting a getting not not even getting an axe getting a you know i hate talking about destruction of trees you know but then again hand drawn animators need that because we used to we we crafted our skills on paper but um thank you to the trees anyway but a chainsaw will do it even faster than an axe so this line this method of line that you see me doing putting precisely because remember this has to be exactly halfway between here and here now yeah if you're so skilled you could do that but even then i'm not happy with that right so think of the amount of time i'm wasting trying to get that halfway oh i got it right now i'm gonna try and do it again it's just like how much more efficient is it to go like that right so 
it's just it's just common sense you know all this nonsense about ego and insecurity it's very very important now there's not much else i can talk about as you're seeing me plonk in these lines halfway in between here so i'm using this as a as a, as a an opportunity to drum into you a lot of people who i know love drawing and you're trying to you're trying to you know you're being cheap you're getting free information off the internet and the thing about free information is is occasionally you'll run into the gold mine which is me giving you giving you absolute truth uh, of what it is don't believe me okay fine go look at anybody else producing this kind of work and talking about it good luck right so at the end of the day um, you need to be efficient with your line and you need to get whatever hang-ups you have about doing lines like that out of your head because I'm, I'm only interested in getting this done quick this isn't exactly the world's most interesting aspect of of the process right I've done the animation if I could I would just pay somebody to clean it up right but uh, I'd rather invest in my own in IPs my own intellectual properties rather than this which is in some ways kind of like a glorified piece of fan animation right so I don't really want to throw my budget into that but uh, so I'll do it myself so I'll do it the efficient way right I make these nice scratchy lines here that's an easy one and even then I, I don't get it quite right see now I could force myself to get it right and go there we go but here it's not right you see so just just do that now I've got something easy to trace right with a nice tidy line right so hopefully that gets through to you right that's that's probably when we're talking about clean up line that's probably one of the most important aspects um, because I've talked about the in-betweening right and I'm not going to be cleaning it up on this video because it'll just double the length of the video right because you got to get a nice steady line like that you know which I'm tracing like that now right but it's just not worth it um, to do that on the video right so that's that uh, we got this left and then you'll be able to see it all in between so these shapes are now in there like that bum, bum, bum. there we go so let me delete my rough underneath so now we have something like this right now this may be what I might want to do uh, prepping it for cleanup is is this is a little too rough right in fact the whole snout area is a little too rough but first I will because the snout was the trickiest part right but first I will tidy up that nose and again I'm using that that kind of line right because I don't want to waste time I'll make the uh, I'll probably be a little bit more longer with my line and with my strokes when I'm tracing because you know that's actually the easy shit right so yeah that's working so now I'm gonna the nose is a lot tidier so now I'm gonna tidy the rest of the snout maybe the snout that needs a little bit of tidying and here I can start to be a little bit more like okay because I know where I'm going with the line so here I can start to be a little bit more like that right now I'm secure about what where that line is I've done the hard work I can start and I'm gonna trace it again with a with a with a raster or a bitmap line right which is which will give me that pencil effect so it won't be so harsh right so here we have something like that so now we can see and I think we're almost ready 
because I, I prime it and see that I'm simply going to trace it, but I'm going to, you know, I said the eyes are super important. So I'm going to do the eyes again, right? Just to make sure that my eyes are a hundred percent, right? I'm gonna make sure I go between this one and this one. It doesn't matter if I get a few bumps in the line. This isn't the clean line, right? This is simply a nice, precise line for me to trace, right? Now, depending on the type of in between, I won't. I wouldn't do a rough in between like this. If it was a really close in between that didn't involve any sh any significant shape changing, like the snout or the direction of the eyes or the gap between the eyes being rather large um, I could straight up uh, draw with a clean line clean black line in between with no real um, preparation but this frame I picked this frame because I thought it'll be a good example for you to see how to go about doing this stuff that's a little bit more challenging to in between some of the more challenging in betweens you know shape handling shape maintenance right so let's just get this one down um and oopsie this side here so you see now i can be all illustratory with the line and even then when I want to curve it and I can't be bothered to rotate my disc I will go back to that scratchy line because again why am I wasting time I don't want to wa waste time making this line so nice because I got to do it again right so this is what we what you've seen me do is a what we call a rough in between right because we want to go straight into cleaning that in between up really ideally for the most efficiency right so there 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 now i'm really keeping my eye on the distance between here and here i think that is good enough when we're that close and we can see there's a slight narrowing but you know I think when we're that close, we can see that how we're all right. Now I've tidied up that snout. Can you see the illusion all nicely working there, right? We got to slow into this. So here, between here and here, I can just draw a straight black line, right? So there's going to be a number of frames between here and here to really hold that expression. But I wouldn't do rough in-betweens between here and here. I would just do it clean, straight, right? Because it's so easy to draw in f the lines in between. But between here and here was a little bit more involved so there you can see that's how we've taken that to that level now I will simply trace that with a nice black raster or bitmap line whichever word you prefer I always call it bitmap right so there we go so that's how that's looking so hopefully you've enjoyed um, this element of learning how to in between complex characters and cheat shapes now you can learn a, a lot more of this stuff at ambanimation.com simply click on real animator training join the real animator training library the real animator training library is the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation there's nothing like it and there's nothing that equals it and there's nothing at this particular price it says feel the change for real for a reason literally people's lives all over the world now have access to the world's best animation training um, and their lives are being transformed you got a ton of information here with videos for you to watch explaining what is in the real animator training library who it's for and indeed who it's not for okay um, the you can listen to these tons of testimonials of people who have experienced real animator training and you can even see some of their work if you click join now you can see uh, over here that we are you know people who have come out of real animator training I mean this guy he's enjoying masses of uh, appreciation on Twitter now and he deserves it because his um, you know he's been through the real animator training library and he's producing work like this 
which completely um, is as good as if not you know it's industry level and it's better than what a lot of people from some of the world's best supposedly world's best uh, places are doing such as Gal Arts uh, you know Goblin uh, Sheridan you know this guy he's done you know he's done this all on his own and he was able to get to the standard in just three years from learning a real animator training so there's people coming off three-year degree courses maybe perhaps you've come off a three-year degree course can you do this well if you join the real animator training library you most certainly could um, why not all right uh, it's so nice his work I'm so proud of him there's plenty of other people's work here um, who you can watch and enjoy including people who have uh, been paid uh, to do stuff um, so the real animator training library is split into uh it's called real for a reason the real stuff is in the training archives where you actually will train and get and learn how to do the stuff to get to that level um if we go in training archives you'll see uh that you can either buy them in bundles or save you and save yourself a ton of money buying you either have the training archive bundle or the master animator training bundle you can click on those and check out what's in those bundles basically it's a combination of all the stuff in the training library in both sections uh, the basics archive basically you're gonna follow these courses they're specifically designed for you to follow step by step with no deviation you're not to watch the video and um, then try your own thing that's not gonna help waste of time waste of money waste of your time waste of my time uh in making these videos and selling you this course waste of your money all right just if you got that mentality stick to youtube wait until you feel a bit more real and you're ready to be a real animator then come and start to learn from here all right so you're gonna follow these videos step by step everything i say you're gonna do all right and you're going to do it with me as you watch these videos because I don't speed up and I don't like today I was talking about other things about line or whatever but in these videos you're going to just I talk about everything in relation to what we're drawing all right no deviation nothing there's the step by step courses the basics archive will basically take you through uh various videos you know you got the ball series here so basically you got three videos on the basic bouncing ball which is going to teach you those three fundamental laws of timing arcing slowing in and slowing out you're going to focus on six basic laws six fundamental laws of movement in the basics archive the pendulum series builds on uh timing uh arcing slowing in and slowing out with follow through and overlap okay so you're going to learn a little bit about that in all of these you're also learning about pose to pose and uh, straight ahead e even from these thumbnails you can see like here we're talking about pose to pose getting the ball from various things so you're going to learn already in those two series you learn the majority of the laws then you're going to move on to the basic walk cycle uh, where you're going to learn about um, solid drawing as well as then the arm you can see is just basically a swinging pendulum so you got um the walk cycle series you know it's basically like you've got four videos for each walk cycle separating the different parts of the body so you've got a basic walk a standard walk a jogging cycle a run cycle a front walk and a front run cycle so that's six different walks four videos so you've got 24 videos on walks um plus the other stuff in the ball and pendulum series then you're going to do the head turn head turns which is going to really work your solid drawing maintaining the solid drawing if we look at what we did today it all starts with the basic understanding of head turns and things like that right and here you see the character giving exposing its chin and then looking down and that's what you will do in this varied head turn exercise with a basic round ball with basic shapes then you have a laws of animation overview basically so that's the basics archive um well, you're, th you're then gonna want to move to the intermediate archive which will focus on the six laws of life uh the six laws of life uh, while consolidating the six fundamental laws of movement now you're gonna move from bouncing balls and pendulums and matchstick men 
into a uh, flower sack. So you're going to start with consolidating solid drawing, but you're learning this flower sack because we're going to start putting life into our animation. Having a man simply walking and moving, and while it might look a little bit lively, lively in some of those walks, it's just movement predominantly in the Brasics archive. With this guy, we're going to start putting life into it with the six laws of life. So the flower sack is, is not a basic thing in regard to real animator training. It is an intermediate thing because how can you give anything life without understanding the basic laws of movement? So we're going to jump in with the squash and stretch um, with this three-part video. You're going to see how you're going to understand how to build this flower sack and make appealing shapes with it. Um, so underneath all of these, uh, the appeal and exaggeration, laws of appeal and exaggeration are being drummed into you while you're learning squash and stretch. You're going to learn anticipation. I think we just have to, okay, two videos. I thought there was just one on anticipation. Uh, you're going to learn primary and secondary action, uh, which is, you know, this. You're going to learn uh, follow through overlap and drag. You're going to learn how to build that and put life into that uh, with the flower sack waving this flag around, which is a very fun piece of animation. A lot of real animator training library members really have fun with that one. You're going to learn about staging. Okay. You're going to learn about how to stage a scene, uh, you know, professional practice in that regard. Then you're going to move on to. Uh, you're going to move off the flower sack and you're going to start doing a uh, four step human walk cycle. So there's, he's going to take four steps and they're all going to be very different. Okay. So you're going to learn uh, with a much more complex version of the stick figure. Then you're going to get like the basics archive. You're going to learn about walks and runs, but with quadrupeds again, four to five videos, mostly four videos. I think the basic first one has five videos. You're going to separate, so the hind legs, the front arms, the two of them together, the head, the tail, adding the spine and the skin on the basic quadruped walk. So you're going to do that again uh, in the intermediate archive. So you've got f uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 20, 21 videos of quadrupeds. You've got a basic walk, a quadruped trot, quadruped canter, quadruped single suspension gallop and quadruped double suspension gallop. So that's basically the intermediate archive. After intermediate, you may want to consider advanced animation. Advanced animation is um, moving or consolidating all of those 12 laws of animation, but then we're going to learn a lot about this thing called the secret science of shape simplification. So you're going to take uh, something like a basic stick figure and you're going to learn to animate a complex uh, peacock character with all these various different eyes and complexities of design on the tail but you're going to understand how to draw on model you're going to understand how to uh, we're moving away from stick figures and flower sacks right into more appealing cartoon drawing model to get that right you're then going to learn about advanced solid drawing with this uh, four or five part video on doing a head rotation, building a basic mannequin and then adding a character and drawing it to model um, on top of the mannequin. So you're going to learn a lot about more about character design, not necessarily the design aspects, but keeping the character on model and keeping things consistent, keeping facial features consistent and things like that. And then after the uh, character turn, uh, the head rotation, you're going to have to understand how that works with a human body. So we're going to be, this is a long, strong, very strong series. We're going to be focusing on this 15 part uh, video. So there's over, like you can see each one of these videos, one hour, 28, one hour, 37, one hour, 12, one hour, 10. 49 minutes, one hour, four. So each of these videos are like oh, an hour, an hour, almost an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and a half. So you 15 videos here. This full body turnaround is uh, over at least probably about, you know, I would say 18 to 20 hours worth of content just for that one exercise. 
it's extremely advanced and it's going to help you understand the human form so a separate one for the face even though we cover the face consolidated in there the advanced quadruped uh, cycle is putting personality in the walks and again this is a very long series it's 11 videos but you're going to learn how to animate this cartoon dog put him on model and have him cycle like the four-step human walk in the intermediate you're going to have this guy doing a various different quadruped walks but in a much more cartoony personality advanced way and then finally there's a dialogue course now the dialogue course you cannot do as a step by step because um it's you're going to do it with your own piece of dialogue and your own character so you're going to watch what i do here and implement um so this is a little bit different um, i'm planning on building some more dialogue archives a, di a dialogue specific archive but this will teach you the first video is two hours and it's going to show you how to break your dialogue down uh, put it in an exposure sheet which a lot of people don't really cover because they tend to scrub their timelines and match which is fine but you, if you're not intimate with the dialogue if you haven't really understood how this works then you're not really going to uh, fully know your dialogue and fully know the frame count to fully be able to exploit your animation so that's the advanced animation course um, in we've got two other archives in here the anatomy archive is extremely powerful it's focusing on the complete human skeleton because um, everything is basically just shapes right uh, so as long as you get the joints right you can um, draw muscle shapes if you want or clothes shapes muscles are important but for an animator it's very important to know the basic construction which is the skeleton so here we've got like um all of the different parts of the body are divided into sections so you've got the shoulder the thorax and there's a number of videos for each different section of the body where you're going to be doing turnarounds of all of these you know even a turnaround a 360 turnaround of the spine understanding how the spine works um the three different sections of the spine the pelvis the three different bones to each side six bones in the pelvis but three on each side doing a turnaround of the pelvis understanding that awkward shape legs arms hand foot skull okay with the skull you're going to piece together a human skull with all the different bones and understand how that works understand the difference between the actual calvira the top of the skull and the mandible the jaw bone understand all the different aspects so that's a anatomy archive very powerful that's going to also help your drawing skills uh improve um it's not to be rushed it's to be done in conjunction with these if you can the animation lectures are not step by step they're almost like animation seminars that you would attend so here we've got introduction to storyboard and staging so these are almost like when we're going to talk about edutainment in a minute they're almost like what we did today okay uh but they're a little bit less they're very informal uh very straight into the point kind of like what we did today actually um the edutainment's a little bit different so here you got this priming your character for animation so here you can see how this car you know character is being developed for animation beyond the walk cycle animating walks that are not just walk cycles so here you can watch this complex disney-esque character walking towards the screen how to get that right so there's a ton of stuff in here to enjoy um uh in the animation lectures now the other half of the training library is what we call edutainment it's less um it's less focused and it is l very much like the you know content that other people sell as courses but i don't um it's you're basically um i'm basically a master of animation you can see me you just watch my channel you watch me like for example this animation that i'm doing was just at the request of my audience and i did it all live okay i may not have cleaned it up live i did it like this right all live in a live stream while talking and um you know just masterfully demonstrating the skill and sharing my knowledge and i call that edutainment 
having fun, banter with the audience, and um, sharing, just giving you demos. Um, so, for example, the How to Animate Your Own Film is a 56-part live stream series. It's got 56 episodes broken up, 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, all the way to 56. And, you know, there's almost six days, 24-hour days worth of content in here. And you watch me animate a film, all suggested by the audience, okay? They wanted Santa coming down the chimney for Christmas and th this boy. And this is the quality of animation you watch me doing on the live streams. And I make the whole film. You can watch the whole film here, okay? Um, I make the whole film uh, in, this, in this format. So you can see every scene being built, animated. You know, some are rougher than others. But we watch the whole thing being made over these 56 live streams the characters being designed the rooms the layouts the backgrounds even this door design all these things uh, we watch the whole thing uh, being made in these 56 live streams so while it might not be a tutorial that you can follow if you wanna if you're an independent and you want to make your own film you can see just how, what I could do in six days all right and there's no reason why you couldn't do that remember travis if we go back here remember this guy he made his own film in just three years right of of learning going through the real animator training library working through his own uh working through the exercises and then implementing his own so this you know this didn't take him three years he was training with me for three years and then he made his own film right so just so just to remind you that if you're watching this thing well it's easy for him to say he made his own film and he did that in six days or whatever what i'm not skilled well i've just shown you somebody who's come out of this place who's made their own film and so if you know if you're if you're interested and independent if you're trying to make your own stuff um this series is very very helpful the other stuff is similar kind of stuff. We've got animation breakdowns. You can watch me breaking down a famous animation scene. So if we look at these Disney squirrels, you can watch me breaking down uh, scenes from Disney Sword in the Stone. You can watch me breaking down the Thundercats intro, which was a popular 80s cartoon. So you can watch me studying all these, all these various animations uh scenes you can watch me studying and explaining to you the things that i find animation sessions is kind of like the how to animate your own film but just quicker different subject matters so you can watch me animating a fire breathing dragon over these three streams designing the character animating the character animating a vampire you can watch that happening and it's called edutainment because there's a lot of fun and banter with the audience while we're doing this, right? So it's a l way less formal. There's cursing in there, so just be mindful. There's all kinds of talk, okay? Drawing sessions, you can watch me drawing stuff. You can watch me, uh, what is this? Drawing two characters interacting, okay? So here you can watch how to two characters, this drawing being made. Uh, you can watch uh, me... Uh, designing for example somebody asked me to do a take on mary poppins how would you design mary poppins so i designed mary poppins all right so the, again it's like the um it's the audience suggesting asking me how would you design this how would you design that and we tackle the problems and solve them in those live sessions so those are the drawing ones we have the live question and answer, okay, you can watch this video here, people, audiences, episodes 1 to 10, episodes 1 to 9, so live question and answer sessions uh, with live streams, um, and that's it, basically, so that's the edutainment archives, um, the kind of stuff you'll get in here. Uh, these informal live stream sessions are packed full of information and value that won't be found in many established courses or degrees, and you are getting them for the price of some branded sports shoes, okay, so... Bear that in mind, uh, you know, um, if you think this place is too costly for you, um, look at where some of your money goes and ask yourself, are you a real animator? What is your real passion in life? Because the value that you're getting here, we have places, industry professionals, okay? 
industry professionals and college graduates from the most established courses are signing up to this course and you're getting all the training you're getting the training they still desire for the price of a mid-range laptop that's true for a price of a mid-range laptop or an ipad you're getting the best training in the world because People, not only are you seeing the kind of stuff people are doing coming from here, people who have graduated from CalArts, okay, who have paid around about 180 grand for their um, course or have joined this Real Animator Training Library, people who have gone to Don Bluth University who have paid 10 grand, okay, uh, have joined this um, place. People all the way from 10 grand to 180 grand have joined this place you've got people who've been to full sail people who've been to animation mentor people who've studied from richard williams's son at pearson college in uh london uk so basically all these people have been there or coming here you've got to ask yourself why uh and uh, not only that we have people who've worked currently working at disney uh people who have worked at disney feature or uh, canada uh disney you know on movies like peter pan 2 uh, we've had um, people who've worked at Cartoon Network, established Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon shows joining this place. Uh, so you got to ask yourself, why are those people joining this place? Um, if this was just some guy on YouTube sharing his stuff, um, why are the, the people who've invested that kind of money, people with that kind of background joining this place? Um, the answer is obvious and um, it's plain and simple. So... Again, nothing will match this place on price. Nothing will match this place on quality. It is real animator training. So if you consider yourself a real animator or you consider yourself training to be a real animator, then you simply need to be in this place. Okay, then um, I hope you have enjoyed this live stream. Um, it has been my absolute pleasure to disclose this information to you. I will continue to disclose this information to you. Hand-drawn animation is the world's greatest art form in animation and it is not puppetry in any way shape or form you are the animator you are not the puppet of the computer and you are not playing with the computer's puppets built in the computer you are making every mark you are drawing every frame all of the greatness that you are seeing is completely coming from you and nothing else simple as you're a real animator and it's time to get real and train for real thank you